The Hidden Stairs and the Magic Carpet, Chapter Eight. Prisoners. Clump, clump. The children were marched to a room at the top of another tower. A dozen nin warriors in shiny black armor surrounded them. Clong. The iron door was bolted shut. They were prisoners. Lo Spark packed back and forth before a thick blue curtain that covered one of the walls. Princess Kea, he began, "You and your friends spoiled my plans to attack Zolfendorf Castle, and Galen discovered my little ride of Jaffa City. No matter having you as a prisoner is far more valuable. Beside, you have something that belongs to me." The princess backed away. Let us go, Spa. My father is on his way here right now. Spa laughed. Neither your father nor your mother will ever see you again. My mother died, Kaya said, and my. The sorcerer smirked. Your mother is. Then he stopped. His eyes flashed. That leather patch on your wrist. What? Kaya said. Spar grabbed the pouch from Kaya. My mother gave me that, she cried, trying to take it back, but Spa held it high. His fins turned inky black. He began to shake. Oh, Jewel, if it be you, show me now your shape so true. At once, the pouch began to shrink in a sparse plum. It shivered to the size of a small egg. Then it turned very smooth. Then it turned red. It began to glow. No, Kaya gasped. No, no, Spall hold. The red eye of dawn. You had it all along. Now I have it. The first power is mine once again. Give it back to her, you smelly fish head, Eric yelled. He rushed at Spall. But one of the knees grabbed him, and pushed him longly into Julie and Neil. Then the sarkers spoke a words that made their blood turn to ice. I know you, Dre. What? Julie said. How could you? You are from the upper world. You have found the stairs, my stairs. Spot pointed at Eric. They are in your house. Eric started. How do you know that? I know many things about you, Spar said. Then he reached back and tore the blue curtain aside. Uh oh, Neil whispered. Behind the curtain was a tall display stand. On the stand was a round black and white object. Our soccer ball, Julie exclaimed. I have learned much from this object. Spar said, hovering over the bowl, but not as much as I shall learn. When I am done with you, suddenly a voice cried shrilly from the window, "You are done right now, Spar!" Everyone turned to see a mob of orange hair circle down the wall. Max, Julie cried, "The one and only." Max jumped to the floor and quickly squeezed the sticky web of a fence around the knee's feet. Ha <laughs> ha! He chuckled. Girls, Rose Spar spurted. Take them all to the dungeon. His red warriors lunged at the children, the trapped of a Max's curvy web. All right, Eric cried, laughing for the soccer ball and tossing it high. Neil, your famous back kick, just like in my basement. Neil grinded. Heads up, everybody! He jumped at the ball and kicked it hard. Ah! One knee ground. My nose! Service your right! Julie shouted. She shook up and kicked the ball again. This time, it went straight for another knee's stomach. He fell back into two others, knowing. Them to the floor. Score, Eric said, dividing for the ball. I will get the red eye of Dom, Kaya cried, but Sparks spun around to raise his fist. Call Blum, 
A bolt of red fire shot from his hand. He staggered back as the fire blew past Kaya, punching a hole straight through the wall to the hall outside. We'll get the eye later, Eric shouted. Everybody out! He jumped through the hole in the wall with Neil and Kaya. Julia and Max ran after them. They all rushed down the hall, but the knees were right on their heels. This way, said Eric, tumbling through a narrow door. He tossed the soccer ball to Julie and slammed the door behind them. Uh oh, said Neil as he looked around. Dim light from a high window showed that they were in a small room. A very small room. Uh oh, he's right, Julie said. I think we found a dungeon all by ourselves.